Um, I volunteered to be kind of part of this panel because I am the LGBT officer for the union and I'm also the former Catholic Society president. So I'm kind of someone of faith who belongs to and represents a community of people who are among the most persecuted by all world religions, essentially. For me, what's, been, what's allowed me to kind of be reconciled being a practicing Catholic and a practicing gay is kind of my faith isn't always my religion. So I believe as a Catholic in the Catholic Mass and the Holy Communion, but I don't always agree with my own church's views quite evidently as being a gay man. Um, <coughs> all major religions have the same viewpoint that homosexual acts are wrong and some even go as far to say that committing these acts are moral evils and I find that personally extremely offensive. Um, I developed depression and anxiety for many years after hiding my sexuality from many people around me, my friends and my family and I know a feeling that feeling is shared by many LGBT people and in fact about 37% of LGBT people are members of faith communities and they're often excluded by both communities because of the other. But when I did finally come out and I told my family and friends, it was their faith that kept them together, their faith that family is strong. And I'm not talking about necessarily faith in God, I, my idea is that everyone has a faith whether it's in faith in humanity or faith in justice or any type of faith really, it's also faith in, de in a deity. So there's another statistic which I found quite interesting is that 58% of religious young people agreed or strongly agreed that heterosexuality and homosexuality should be treated equally. And for me, that gives me a good indicator of the future of how religions are slowly changing. And for me, an idea that the Pope is always around in his 60s or 80s, and he's always going to be about 60, like 60 years behind modern beliefs. So hopefully my idea is that in 60 years' time, we'll be, we'll be changing. So my idea, my main thought really was what effect does religion have on its believers? And I think that churches and religions have too much influence. So for me and many other people, we, we thought as people listening to pastors and priests in our churches preach on homosexuality and we feel as part of this community so alone, even though people around us are openly disagreeing with these things, you still manage to feel alone in these communities. But as has been brought up quite a few times, people say oh, moral codes come from religion. I, I disagree with that. I think that moral codes come from faith, um, whether that's a faith in someone like God or other people or friends, families, just justice. A faith in justice gives you a moral code. I think that religion is the avenue that faith in a deity uses to deliver its moral codes. And somewhere along the line, it kind of gets polluted and changed because of this large influence that these churches have. And while they say a lot of bad and hurtful things, they are also the world's charity givers. They lead the world in humanitarian aid. They instill values of not wanting material wealth, and they, they encourage people to seek beyond their own life, to see what's, what's further. Science is seeking what's, the answers to what's in the universe and what already existed. We want things to, kind of, to do with how we are who we are, and how we love why we love. And by our nature, we seek these answers. Just like naturally we seek science answers, we also seek other answers about our own lives. Should religion and faith be relegated to the personal sphere? Well, I think that, again, this is impossible. Because I think that faith in anything is deeply personal, and it inspires us to be who we are. And we don't hide ourselves. We go out and make friends. We go and campaign. We share our lives together. So if you're going to have a faith in a god or a faith in, you know, in society, then that, in, that kind of affects who you are. And you go out and you become and you are an embodiment of the, that faith. So I think it's impossible to relegate it to a personal sphere. I do believe that, you know, that the law applies to each and every one of us and it, it tries our rights and duties. And you know, if everyone is governed by it. So we shouldn't be a society that uses religion as an excuse in our laws. I think that you know, freedom of expression, freedom of religion and expression doesn't cover my, my freedom to be who I am. They can have, people can have their own opinions, but as long as it doesn't stop me from being who I am and sharing the love that I have for my partner. Um, so I, I, again, my, in summary, I kind of think that religions have too much influence, but they are communities, they are communities that help each other. I, I, when I stood for LGBT officer for, for here, my home community, my church is at home, and here both supported me, even though it's in flight of what they technically believe. Um, 
And I, I, I say I go to church, and I'm technically the church says I'm living in sin, in, in moral sin, um, and that I, can, I cannot be redeemed because I don't feel sorry for what I've done. But I don't feel persecuted when I go to these churches. I feel loved. And that's why I still go, and that's why I think religions are very important because they're part of who we are, and they encourage people to think deeper, not about science, but about what makes us us. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.